Hey guys, it's Morgan with the Arkansas CW and I'm here today with storyteller Gail Ross. Gail, how are you today? I'm doing good. Fall is one of my favorite times of the year and it seems to be coming early. So you are a traditional storyteller. Can you tell me a little bit about how you got started? Well, um, my, the woman that I started out with as a partner in a storytelling duo, she used to say it was a hobby that got out of hand. Um, I've always loved stories. From the time I was little, I was always um, reading folk and fairy tales, family history, uh, Cherokee legends. And um, when I got older, I went into radio and television. But um, a friend of mine, her name was Elizabeth Ellis. She was a regular storyteller for the Dallas Public Library. And she convinced me that the native stories I tell um, would be a good partnership with her stories from the Appalachian Mountains. And so in 1979, we began traveling and performing together. And then her kids were growing up and moving away. I was married and just starting a family so our ability to travel changed and so, so we each launched our solo career um, i tell at schools libraries festivals museums uh, any place really that would hire a storyteller so are the stories that you tell mainly about your culture i do tell primarily native stories when i began telling Elizabeth and I learned stories from many different cultures, but as I grew older and began to learn more about Cherokee culture and began working with a lot of Cherokee people, then yes, it, um, I end up telling mostly Native stories these days. And why would you say it's important to continue telling these stories? Is it so that they live on for future generations? Oh, exactly. Exactly, especially for our own youth. Um, I don't, you know, people outside the culture, I don't think realize how many negative stereotypes that affect Native people affect our children. Um, they see so many negative images from sports mascots uh, to movies and film. It's very rare for them to see anything in media that it reflects what they know their day-to-day -day life to be. And I think every Native person gets to a certain age where you start thinking about the ones who come after you. So yeah, I tell a lot for our own Cherokee children. Um, and a while, uh, some time back, I was actually teaching uh, kids how to tell stories. Um, I think it's a part of everything that we have to hand on to them. Language, culture, stories, dances, it's all important. The theme of this session that you're a part of at the Native American Cultural Celebration is star stories. Can you tell us a little bit about how stars play a role in these traditional stories? A lot of our traditional stories, um, and most of our traditional stories, explain the world. And more importantly, they manifest our relationships to the world, our relationships to um, animals, our relationship with plants, our relationship with thunder and lightning. And imagine what the sky must have looked like for our ancestors. You know, people who study astronomy go all across the country um, to find dark enough places to really see the sky. We've become so accustomed to the light pollution that we don't even realize that when we're looking up, we're only seeing a fraction of what our ancestors must have seen. So many of our stories explain um, why the sun takes the path that she does, why Uncle Moon grows and shrinks, how the Milky Way came to be, how the Big Dipper or the Sky Bear, as the Eastern people would say, um, a lot of our stories are interwoven with 
how uh, our ancestors observed the world around them and visualized the importance of our relationship with all the natural world. And, and our stories explain that and, and carry on that tradition. Gail, before we finish, if anyone wants to find out a little bit more about you and about the stories that you tell, where would you suggest they go? I am probably the last performer in the world who does not have a website. But you can see many of um, my stories that I've recorded. You can uh, put my name in on YouTube and you'll find stories that I have uh, performances that I've done. And of course, you can always contact the Museum of Native American History. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm sure Charlotte would be happy to pass on my email. Gail, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to meet with me today. It's been such a pleasure just to learn more about you and about the stories that you tell. So thank you so much. It was nice speaking with you. Have a good day.